Um, so the prevalence right now, we think it's anywhere between one to eight and 10,000 birth, live births. Um, we aren't entirely sure because we know that it's in general underdiagnosed. Not every kid that goes in is gonna get a gene screen that's gonna show that they have Duke 15Q. Um, but we know that we are the largest genetic cause of autism. It, we are the cause of two to three percent of all autism that is out there. Um, so we're thinking, we're more like more like more prevalent than we think. Um, there's probably a lot of kids out there that have autism or have some sort of epilepsy that probably have Duke 15 Q, but they are they have their diagnosis and they're good with that. Um, there's a lot of families that want to know why they have autism, or there's a lot of also doctors that that's part of the standard of care is when you get your diagnosis of autism or you start having infantile spasms. The standard of care is you get a gene screen. Um, that really helps us kind of figure out the cause and also the the trajectory of do 15 q over time. Um, when I took over, I was say, I would say that most kids were seven to 10 when they found out that they had do 15 q So they'd been through the, the autism ringer, they'd been through the language delay ringer, they'd been through the hypotonia ri ringer, but then it, when it all comes together, somebody Googled something right and came up with do 15 q and said, why don't we do a microarray? Um, since that's been more common, we're getting a lot more kids who are younger, some prenatally, so I do get a, a fair amount of calls from families that they found out at their their 15-week um, um, quad screen that something was up, and they want to know what's on the horizon for them. 